Good day everyone. What I want to present to you today is something that a lot of people don't really think much about and that is uh, wintertime driving and just the things that could happen. Uh, if, you're, if you drive in a lot of snow and ice and a lot of nasty weather uh, there's definitely some things that you should think ahead about and that is things that could happen like let's say you're, you're just for a scenario here let's say you're cruising down the highway and you hit some black ice and you go shooting off the road and the berm is really deep and you go shooting into that snow and obviously you're up on top of it and the snow's up against the bottom of the car and your wheels might be a foot off the ground however far and there's no way you're getting out of there unless you have a shovel with you and you shovel and shovel and shovel for hours to, I mean because it's all packed up underneath the car um, so basically the only way to get yourself out is to have someone pull you out. So uh, the reason I say this is because this happened to me last winter. And so I, I was not prepared at all. I had absolutely nothing. No shovel or anything. The car was loaded down. I was on a pr pretty long trip. And so I waited while well, I called emergency and, and got a tow truck. They said someone would be coming. And I waited and waited and waited and waited. Ended up being four hours and finally a uh, truck came and he was able to get me out but to make a long story short um, that's what happened to me and the reason I say that is because everybody I think should think about these, this type of thing happening because it's the kind of thing that happens uh, it might never happen to you but it very likely will sometime so uh, if I would have had something uh, like a rope and things that I would have needed to, to get me pulled out I might have been able to get by with only maybe waiting an hour let's say and I would have had an extra three hours so it would have been worth it obviously that time if I was prepared so what I want to present today is a uh, what I think is probably uh, the best option out there for recovering a vehicle so let's take a look at what we have here okay first of all I want to point out to you uh, a few things here. Uh, number one is never use a tow strap to recover a stuck vehicle. Uh, these are now technically I don't know if this would really be a tow strap but it's a tow strap would be kind of like this. Uh, most of them, a lot of them anyway, have a metal hook on the end and never use anything with a metal hook because that's just asking for trouble. If something uh, breaks, something fails in the strap this hook could go flying and anything could happen. Um, you fill in the blanks, but uh, you can imagine things that can happen with these. So never use this to recover a stuck vehicle uh, situation like we're talking about today. Um, the next thing would be the snatch strap uh, or recovery strap, whatever it might be called, which I would say is what this is. Now, this has a loop. There's no metal on it. It has a loop on both ends inside as well and uh, this I think is a 30 foot uh, by three and I've had this for quite a few years and didn't use it much used it a few times and as you can see it's frayed pretty bad so this really probably shouldn't even be used anymore but I have it in the truck just in case uh, this is an option if you're on a budget you can't afford a, a real a really good uh, recovery rope this is an option this will work um, it's not as good of an option, but if you have a, a heavy enough vehicle um, doing the towing, doing the pooling, it will probably work for you. So this is the cheap option, way to go, um, if you can't afford the better option. Okay, first of all, let's look at the size of this. Uh, I have this in the trunk of my car. It's that big, only that thick. So it's not doesn't take up a lot of room at all. Let's open it up. Okay, I still have this in the bag. This is brand new, never used. Uh, let's just take a look at what we have here. Looks like a, a big white, or not necessarily a big, but a long white snake, doesn't it? Um, so this is called a kinetic recovery rope. And uh, the main difference between, the main benefit of this over the other option we looked at of the uh, snatch strap is that this strap would have 
from about 15 to 20 percent stretch rate. As how, that's how much it would stretch when you yank on it. Whereas the kinetic recovery rope will stretch more like 30 percent, approximately 30 percent, and so which gives you a much greater advantage. With uh, you're going to be able to do a lot more at extracting your vehicle uh, from the stuck position with this with a smaller vehicle. Okay, so you know you might with with, with this you might have a small let's say a Jeep, and you could do as much as you could with a a full-size pickup truck with this rope uh, for comparison's sake. So, um, and now I'm driving a, a 2000 uh, Nissan Maxima and the, the Japanese were smart back then anyway. Uh, they have a, a nice hook or a loop actually at every corner of the vehicle which is very nice. Now I have everything in here I need um, to hook up. I have a, a bow shackle here which the, which is a, uh, in this case, this is a 5 8 bow shackle, which means the pin, the yellow part, pin here is 5 8 And I have some of the uh, things for my hitches, a uh, two inch receiver that they were three quarter and they're too big to fit in these. So I had to get this especially uh, for the car here. This fits in perfectly. And so, and I also have a hitch pin in here. So, so let's say I get stuck and a nice pickup truck four wheel drive comes along and he has a two inch receiver on his truck but there's no uh he doesn't have a hitch pin there's nothing in the hitch it's just a it's just the uh receiver so i'll show you uh how you can hook this up like that so first of all i'm going to show you uh how we'll hook this up on the car so let's take a look at that now as you can see i'm showing you on the back of the car here uh, the hooks on the front, or the, the loops on the front, I should say, are pretty much the same. Uh, I figured I'd show you on the back. This is the most, probably the most likely way you would be pulled the direction. Um, more often, probably pulled from the back side because your nose first down into wherever. Uh, these, these kinetic recovery ropes have a, uh, a loop on the end. So basically, uh, you're taking the shackle and you're sticking it through the loop like that and then we're going up here to the loop on the car and put put it like that and put a pin through there now that is a that is a safe connection there um, you know you can you're good to go on this end now that's that's a solid connection. Um, should be safe to give some good tugs on there enough to get you out. Uh, every car is going to be different. Most four-wheel drive vehicles will have something um, probably in the bumpers that, you know, built-in hooks or whatever that are very easy to hook up to. But a lot of passenger cars don't really have anything like that. you got to look underneath and see what your options are. And, you know, a lot of the newer cars don't even really have anywhere to attach a strap or a rope and so just be extremely cautious um, check check into your vehicle talk to someone that knows them uh, talk to your mechanic or whatever uh, make sure you know where if your car has a safe place to hook to because some of them just don't really have any place to hook up and the only option is to hook onto an axle or a control arm, and that's just not a good idea. Um, I would not do that. Uh, some people probably would, but it's just not safe. You're just asking for trouble, uh, break something, pull your car out of line, or whatever it might be. Um, so I would say, yeah, you're kind of up the creek without a paddle if your car doesn't have any recovery points. Um, but yeah, talk to someone, your mechanic, uh, whatever and find out what your car has okay let's say somebody comes along with a nice four-wheel drive pickup truck and he has a two inch receiver but uh, nothing in it okay so that's why I carry this hitch pin with me on the car that way we can just hook it up like this very simple we have the loop here we just take the loop and stick it in there Put the pin through like that and there we go good to go 
uh, you can pull right like that. That way there's no extra metal parts uh, to come loose. That's probably the best option for hooking up if you can do that. Now what we're looking at today is obviously a, a rope for a car. Now uh, that's one other thing I wanted to point out here is that make sure if you buy one of these ropes that you get the right size for your vehicle. I have an inch and a quarter rope on my truck that I can use to pull whatever vehicle if I can help somebody out somewhere along the line. But on the car I have a three quarter inch and they have specific they have specific weight limits for all the sizes. Um, just research or just check on that before you purchase one and make sure you're getting the right size. Now the three quarter which I have for my car, which is designed for, you know, passenger cars, fits in here real nice like you saw with the pin through there. Now probably the next size bigger you'd hardly be able to get it in there and get the pin through because it's pretty minimal with this one. So anything bigger than this, that would probably not be an option. Uh, so if you do have a bigger rope, um, obviously this would be your best option, which is the toe point like this. And you have your, your bow shackle here, you can just hook in like that. Same way we hooked up on the car. Right through through the loop of the rope. And in like that. And that also works. But I like the other option better if you can if your rope is small enough to get in there. But if not, this works also. Uh, that's also very secure and solid. Okay, there's one other option I wanted to point out to you here. I have here now my inch and a quarter rope that I carry on my truck, which is designed for um, that weight of vehicles, uh, heavy four, four by fours, um, full size heavy pickup trucks, and even a few larger vehicles. Now this, obviously, is there's no way I can fit it in there like we did on the car. There's It's just, or I mean the, the rope that I got with the car it's not going to go in there. So that's not an option. So obviously we can use our shackle here um, that I, with this option. I don't have the shackle on this one, but you, that's the best way to do it. But let's say you don't have a two inch receiver on the tow, on the, the towing vehicle. Doesn't have a, a two inch receiver. I want to point out to you another option that you can do. Now, in this case, we have a bar here on the Jeep, which I would not in a recovery situation, I would not use this bar because it's not heavy enough. But I just wanted to use, I'm just going to use this bar to show you the illustration here. If you do have a round tubular bumper, like some vehicles do on the front, or a, a round uh, tube in between the frame channels, like some of them have, uh, this would be an option to go around there. You need to be careful with this option though. You don't want to just go around anything. Obviously, you don't want to go around. Um, the bumper. I mean this one would probably be strong enough, but it would have some sharp edges on the back That wouldn't be too smart. So if you have a nice smooth uh, bar to go around this is this would be an option that would uh, That would work. Okay. We'll just take the take the rope and put it up around the bar And then we're going to use a stick Okay So we'll go like this. Let's take it back a little bit so we're fairly tight. Then we're going to bring this up through here like that so that you have a loop. And then we'll stick the stick in like that. Okay, and then you can pull like that. There you go. Now that is another option that can be used. Uh, don't ever use something metal like a metal bar to put in there, but if you use a, a stick, it's, it's something that works. It's definitely not, you know, your best option. Usually you have a better option, but if there's just no other way, this would be something that would work. Another thing to remember when you're trying to get a vehicle unstuck is always start off slow and easy. There's no reason to really just gun it and just really yank on the vehicle. Uh, just give nice gentle tugs and, and just strengthen it up. Go a little faster till, till you start to move the car. Um, that way you're not putting a lot of extra strain, unnecessary strain on, on either vehicle. So in conclusion, uh, real quickly, just remember, never use a strap like this with metal hooks. Number one thing to remember. And 
Remember, if you're looking to get by cheap, this will work. A snatch strap, recovery strap will do the job. It'll just take a little more energy with the vehicle to extract it. And obviously, like I said, um, this is the best option out there. 30% uh, stretch versus about 15 to 20% stretch. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this little presentation today and hope it's a help to you. And uh, be careful, be safe out there on the highway. Thanks for watching.